What's happening guys, how's it going? Today I've gone through the comparison test that I've been asked for a million times since I bought the Sony 24mm G Master. So we've got five lenses head to head. We've got the 24mm G Master, the 28mm F2 Sony, the 25mm F2 Batiste, the Sigma E-mount 1.4 art lens 24mm also, and the 24mm 2.8 Samyang just because why not? A big thanks goes out to the guys at Auckland Camera Centre for lending me all this gear to do the video with. The only one I actually own at the moment is the G Master 24, which I did buy from them. So if you're based in New Zealand and you're looking for camera gear, I'll link their website in the description below. Check it out. These guys pretty much have the best prices around and they really know what they're talking about. They're all photographers, they're all experienced. So go and check their website out. So I've got image samples, I've got video samples, I've done focus tests and sort of a challenging situation because I didn't want to make it too easy for all the lenses. Let's just just jump straight into it I'll show you guys what we've got so firstly let's just talk about weight and size and build quality and all that sort of stuff so starting from the Samyang it's very very cheap it feels plasticky it doesn't feel like a high quality lens at all and it's, it is really cheap so um, you know it's definitely the worst by far but it's tiny it's so so small next in line would be the 28mm f2 Sony lens the FE mount one and uh, it does feel a little bit better made than the Samyang quite a bit better actually it's you know it's got a lot of metal in it a little bit of plastic but it feels nice it's not weather sealed but it's really small lightweight and it's also a really cheap lens I think the 28mm is definitely much much better value than the Samyang lens even though it's a little bit more expensive next in line would be the 25mm Batiste and that one's really well made it has weather sealing it's really nice to hold its metal construction it has the display on it you can see the my review for that lens individually but it's really well made it's super lightweight and it's quite small next in line would be the 24 mm G Master now it's a little bit bigger than the Batiste and a little bit heavier but it's still a really small lightweight lens you can watch my video I just done on that one individually it's just it surprised me how small it is and of course after that you've got the Sigma 24mm 1.4 which is a lot heavier and it is a fair amount bigger than the G Master now let's talk about focus so I've done some video tests and some eye tracking tests recording the back of the camera and they're all actually pretty good um, there are definitely some differences in terms of video one of them freaked out a little bit but anyway let's just jump into it and I'll show you what I thought along the way so now we've got the 24mm G Master and I've just got someone holding down the eye focus button and I'm walking back and forth as you can see I set it up here because the backlit situation on the left here with the fence you can see that sometimes freaks lenses out and makes them behave funny and I shoot like that quite a lot at weddings you know with backlit sunsets and stuff but this lens handled it fine it, there was no issues whatsoever it's pretty much perfect in terms of eye focus now this is a video sample again this is wide open but uh, you know it just works fine I've got face tracking on and I'm using wide area and uh, you can see it just works awesome there's no problems at all with it next up we've got the Zeiss Batiste 25mm with the eye focus and again it's really really good um, when I got right up close there it lost it for a little bit but I think it was just too close for focus um, but yeah no complaints at all again with eye focus works perfect never had a problem with that lens anyway now onto focus for video and it's the same kind of story it's definitely I think it's a little bit slower than the uh, 24mm so you can see it just catching up there but um, you know it worked fine and I didn't have any problems with it it's generally you know if you're using the Batiste for a video lens I wouldn't have any concerns at all with it it's fine I've used it for a lot of weddings uh, on gimbals and stuff and never had a problem with it then onto the Sigma Art lens I thought this one wouldn't compete with the Sony but um, in terms of eye focus it's really good uh, what I've found is the wider the Sigma lens is the better it's going to focus so like the 85 and the 135 definitely had more problems than any of the wide angle like the 24, 35 or 50 but for eye focus this one worked great video focus it's good uh, it's better than I thought it was compared to like the 35 art is not that great but um, you know this one worked fine uh, it definitely surprised me the only thing is it's a little bit jumpy if you have a look at the background it's not a smooth transition to focus it's more like an instant switch and that's regardless of your settings what you've got you know with tracking with speed and your menu um, it does it anyway now the Sony 28mm f2 it definitely isn't as good as the other ones which kind of surprised me um, you know nothing's changed here but it keep losing your eye so I'm not sure if that's a firmware thing with the a7r3 because I've owned this lens in the past with like the a7r2s and the a9s and I never had a problem with it so I don't know what's going on there but maybe it's just a freak lens 
But in general, I find the lens is great, so I'm not sure I can't explain that. Um, with video on this one, it did also freak out a little bit um, after when I tried to put my hand in front of it and I tested it. It wasn't because it was too close. Um, focus wise, it just couldn't do it for some reason. I'm not sure why. I'm thinking maybe because I haven't really seen this lens do this in the past that it's possibly just this copy or maybe again it's something to do with the firmware but you never know it is what it is this is just a real world test so maybe it can't handle it. Now the Samyang 24mm 2.8 uh, that was really good it didn't have any problems with eye focus you can see head to head you know I'm not doing anything tricky with these videos it focused really well no issues with eye tracking or anything like that and uh, same with video video was pretty good definitely a little bit jumpy for a cheap budget lens really good performance in terms of video focus jumping into lightroom now we're just going to go through a bunch of images that i took um, these first ones i shot all wide open just to compare what they're looking like but um, you know either way have a look at them and see what you think now first off as you can see we've got the 24 mm g mask on the left and the sigma 24 mm 1.4 on the right and the biggest difference with these two is the colors. The Sigma is a lot warmer. Uh, now these have all been edited the same. The white balance and the tint has all been synced. So there's no difference whatsoever with editing and there's definitely a color difference. Both shot at 1.4, they're both really, really sharp. I'm gonna say the Sony has a little bit more fringing than the Sigma. The Sigma one is quite a bit noisier in the background. It's, it's uh, when I say noisier, what I mean is it's quite busy, where the Sony one is really smooth. Uh, and I guess that comes down to the nine bladed aperture design on the G Master lenses. So just a little bit crazier in the background where the Sony is a little bit smoother. But both op optically, they're both really, really amazing. Um, I'd be happy with either. So next up we've got the Batiste 25mm f2 on the left and the Sony 28mm f2, the little cheap lens on the right. Uh, obviously it's not as wide as the 25 but um, you know they're both still good lenses. The difference with these ones though in price is quite big. Um, and as you can see the Batiste here has massive fringing and chromatic aberration. You'll see it more in the other photos. And um, yeah the background's fairly similar but for the price difference, the Batiste one is about 2200 New Zealand dollars and the 28mm is only about $700, so it's a huge difference in price. There's definitely benefits with the Batiste one, like it's definitely punchier. In some situations, like backlit situations, the 28mm can go quite flat, whereas the Zeiss one sort of keeps its tones. Um, but, you know, in this situation, there's really not a whole lot of difference. So next up we've got the two cheapo lenses, so we've got the Samyang 24mm 2.8 and the Sony 28mm f2. Um, these are probably the fairest comparisons in terms of price and you know build quality and all that sort of stuff. The Samyang is definitely not as sharp as all the other lenses. This 28mm is a little bit better, but uh, you know compared to the other three it, they really don't compete. Um, and as you can see the 24mm Samyang in the background is just a mess, it just looks really quite bad. Um, but you know I just sort of threw it in there because it's a wide angle prime and that's what we're comparing. Last little comparison I wanted to go over with these images was the Batiste 25 and the G Master 24 side by side because um, as far as I can see in the comments this is the one that you guys are really tossing up between and you know they're kind of in the same price range and they just seem to be the most commonly compared lens um, other than the 24mm Sigma obviously which has just come out recently so here they are um, straight off the bat you can see the G Master is definitely a lot softer in the background because it's 1.4 and not f2 but when you zoom in they're both really sharp at f2 the 1.4 is the G Master is definitely better definitely sharper and like I said before horrible chromatic aberration on the uh, Batiste I've known that for quite, quite a while because I've owned it for a long time and again the background is a whole lot smoother on the G Master version but um, other than that, they're both great lenses. Just for the price and the aberration and all that sort of stuff and not being 1.4, um, I'd, you know, with the difference in price, I'd just go straight for the 24 G Master if you were looking at these two. Okay guys, so next off, I just took a bunch of photos. These aren't edited at all, so I haven't changed anything whatsoever. They're not presetted or anything. Uh, and I've taken one at f2 and one at 2.8 so you guys can see the difference in sharpness. Um, I find this bark really sort of sets, you know, it's a really good way to be able to tell sharpness and chromatic aberration and stuff like that because it's so harsh. So straight off the bat we've got 24mm G Master on the left, 
25 mil Batiste on the right. And what you're gonna see is a whole lot of chromatic aberration on the uh, Batiste on the right there, uh, which I've already talked about, but it's just so, so obvious. And towards the end here, towards the edges, you can see the Batiste is kind of freaking out. It's not nowhere near as sharp uh, on the edges, but the uh, G Master is really nice and really well controlled in this highlights. Next off, we've got the 24 mil Sigma and the 28 mil F2. And when you zoom in, they're both actually pretty good. Uh, the 28 mil is surprising, to be honest. At F2, it's really good. It's just, again, when you get down here, massive difference. So in the center, it's good. And then when you go out to the edges, it just turns to complete rubbish, pretty much. Now I'll just go back to these ones. So I've got the 24 mil G Master and the 24 mil Sigma on the side, just because they're both at 1.4 and they're both kind of similar. And um, they're both pretty much the same, I think. Um, I believe the G Master has a very slight edge, but uh, you know they're pretty close in terms of corner sharpness and stuff like that. I mean, obviously that's out of focus, but if you go over to the edge, you can see the Sigma fades out a little bit where the G Master stays sharper. Now, when you stop them down to 2.8, you can see a big difference. So we've got the G Master on the left and the Batiste on the right and it's a massive difference at 2.8. As soon as you stop that G Master down, it just overtakes pretty much everything. Um, the detail is massive. So yeah, big improvement there. So now again, we've got the G Master on the left and the Sigma on the right this time, both at 2.8. And you can see they're both pretty close. Um, I'd say the G Master is still a little bit sharper, but actually, yeah, around that stump area, it's definitely sharper. So, um, you know, G Master takes over again. And then we've got the G Master on the left again with the 28 mm F2 on the right. And again, you can see it's quite a difference. Um, they're all good lenses, but the G Master definitely takes over. So that's it guys, final thoughts. I would still go for the G Master. I'm really happy with my purchase. In terms of optical quality, I think the Sigma is definitely the closest, but you do sacrifice in video focus and a few other little bits and pieces. You know, it's larger and heavier and stuff like that, but none of them are like 70 to 200 heavy, so whatever, it doesn't really matter. I think the Batiste has kind of been kicked to the side a little bit. If people are coming into it now and just buying one of these lenses, there's not really much point because it's not that much cheaper and you're not really gaining anything. The G Master sort of takes over and in all areas over the Batiste lens. So that's just my opinion. I'm really happy I bought the G Master and I'm still happy with my purchase even after trying all these lenses out. I do shoot photo and video obviously and I'm just really stoked with it. Again thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next video in a couple of days.